This is a follow-up to the Roberto Medina video from a few days ago. I had some subscribers that were impressed with his showing against Meldrick Taylor, so I thought it'd be interesting to see how he fared against ESPN favorite Terrence Ali, as I didn't show more extensive highlights in that profile video. Medina has the more controversial story, but uh, Terrence Ali is the A-side here. Uh, he had some stops and starts early in his career, fighting out of Guyana, Trinidad, and later Canada. Uh, but he comes to the United States and he rides the ship while campaigning on the Atlantic City casino circuit. Uh, he became a regular on ESPN and is now the WBC's number two ranked contender in the lightweight division. Now this is Medina's second comeback bout in 18 months. He was arrested immediately after his fight with Meldrick Taylor as he was wanted for escaping from a Colorado prison in 1982. Despite the setback, Medina is back in the ring for another shot at redemption. A little more than a year ago, and uh, Medina told us this morning, Dave, that he knows Ali has been down, and he thinks he can do it again. Thinks that a fighter is susceptible to it once it has occurred. Since the knockout, though, Ali has gone 6-0-1 and fought some pretty tough customers along the way, including the good 12-round win over Miguel Santana. We saw the customary Ali flying out of the gate first round. Now for Medina, this is only his second fight in the last 18 months, and you wonder what effect that might have going up against the guy of Terrence Ali's caliber, Dave. You would figure that the rustiness is going to show up sometime during the fight. He said today he's not quite at the top of his game, but he's almost there. A couple chopping right hands by Ali. Somewhat effective, a couple went over the top. Medina will have to out punch Ali on the inside if he wants to shot. Bell. This is an easy fight. It's got to keep the jab in the guy's face, okay? Two jabs, three jabs. And then the right hand, left hook. Every time you switch, get off your Take right hand breath. quick. Deep it'll deep beat breath. the left hook. It'll beat the left hook all the time, okay? And it'll beat his left hand all the time. Just get your right hand off quick, okay? But nice and steady. Relax a little bit. You yeah, a little too tight. A little too tight, right. tight man. Right. Okay? <laughs> you all right? Dig that right arm and hook behind the right hand, all right? Give me the water. Pull your head back. Slow. Stay nice and cool. Stay nice and cool. Double up the jab. Ali's highlight from the opening round as he lands the right hand between the defenses of Medina. He beat Medina's left hand to the punch, and that's what they were telling him in the corner. Ali out quickly again. Medina fending most of those punches off with his glove. Nothing really landed. That was a pretty good shot for Ali to take. As you see in our scorecard here, Ali gains a slight edge in the opening round. Dave, I know in your column in the Atlantic City Press that you had uh, the Ali Santana fight as one of your top ten of 1986. Yeah, it certainly was an excellent fight with Santana forcing Ali to use a lot of the skills he had not been forced to in all of his fights since Arroyo. In your estimation, what was the top fight of the year? Top fight of the year was Burt Cooper defeating Henry Tillman. Henry Tillman. First Olympic gold medalist to fall, uh, two knockdown affair. Tillman came back after being floored twice and really made a good fight out of it in the middle rounds. Saw Tillman last week here on ESPN in that four-round TKO over Stanley Ross. Tillman due to fighters shooting up in the cruiserweight division, and already they have to fight each other to settle it because there aren't other fighters around. What a great Olympic team it was. <laughs> Ali trying to do some damage inside. Good combination. No backhanded, Robert. No backhanded. He's going to a southpaw style momentarily, hoping to confuse Ali. Now, this would be where you would think Medina would like to have the fight waged, but if Ali can smother him in here, really gain a big psychological advantage as well because he already has the reach. 
pretty good inside countering work by Medina. Ali wants to dedicate this fight to a man he fought twice in his young career, a man by the name of Walter Smith, who is now paralyzed from the neck down after suffering a, uh, an accident, a construction accident in Manhattan. Dr. Ali fought him twice in 1980, uh, beating Walter Smith once and losing to him. Good hand speed by Ali. Seems like that's the difference so far. Because Medina is perfectly willing inside to trade. Ali said today he is at the top of his game, 100% for this fight tonight. Honestly feels that uh, nobody can stop him. He wants a shot at the title and doesn't understand why nobody's getting in touch with him. And there's a guy right there. Roberto Medina, 30 years of age, five foot seven, a record of 13, two and one with nine knockouts. Who feels that it will only be a matter of time, a matter of time Dave, before he jumps into the world class rankings. Well, he hasn't really had the wear and tear on his body that a typical 30 or 31 year old fighter would have because of all the delays. And right now, that is working in his favor. Howdy said when he tries to KO an opponent, he doesn't have much luck, that they just sort of come natural for him. This is what he's trying to do inside, the body work. Two inside, and then he comes across with the right. He put Ali pretty good on those exchanges inside. Okay, give him a shot of water. Okay, let's go. Let's go, blue corner. Come on, blue corner. Let's go, cousin. Round three is underway. Schedule to go 10. That's far, how do you have it scored, Dave? First round, fairly obvious, Ali. That round, very tough. Ended up giving it to Ali, 20 to 18. On, a slight edge here. Now Medina. The last few months has uh, stepped up his road work. Said earlier in his career, he was doing four, maybe four and a half miles, up to seven miles of road work now, and uh, sparring 10 rounds. You really cannot underestimate that stamina as you go into the middle and late rounds in a fight. That's when you see who's been willing to pay his dues. Medina covering nicely, now tries to counter, spins Ali around and puts him on the rope, but is unable to unload anything. You see right there, one big edge Ali has in a lot of his fights. Boxing must come a lot easier to him now. Wouldn't you think, Dave, he has nothing on his mind now except for what he has to accomplish in the ring? No longer has to worry about the authorities looking for him. Don't have to look over his shoulder anymore. Now we are winding down now. Round three, scheduled 10. Terrence Ali and Roberto Medina. You can pile up the points. Round four. Oh, what a victory this would be for Roberto Medina if he could somehow find a way to beat Terrence Ali tonight. But so far, for, for the first three rounds, it has been the uh, tremendous. Nice little move by Medina, luring Ali into the uppercut and then trying to fire a counter of his own. Well, it would seem like Ali cannot miss with that shot, the way they're set up right now. Minute left in round four. <laughs> Ali leaning back, trying to unload a hook that Medina saw coming. What he 
started the show toward the end of the round, stepping outside and going to the jab. He's digging the body pretty well. Ali, one of 13 children born in Guyana, now makes his home in New York City. And of round four is upon us. I said a moment ago that was the end of round five. I looked out at my scorecard. That was the termination of round six. We are now in round seven. And Dave has Ali ahead by three on his scorecard. That's it. Dina kind of climbed back into things a little bit last round. A fast start, a weaker finish. Now Medina, there you see, his longest fight has been six rounds, while Ali has, has gone the distance. The last time Ali went 12 was his last outing against Santana right here in Atlantic City. He's got championship work habits. He's consistent. Ali now starting to cover Medina very effectively here in round number seven. Medina, big trouble. Get out, get out, close he is. Step back, close he is. Push him back. Neither fighter has been down in this fight. Round seven is winding down. Thus far, it has been a good show by Terrence Ali. Oh, to get any kind of a rhythm. When you can get somebody thinking defensively for two thirds of a round, really takes the edge off. Round eight, schedule 10. Been a pro. You got to go way back to 1979. Turned pro in December of that year. Then a lot of fighters, and this is probably going to help him when he does get into the title fight. Other than a disqualification win over Pedro Montero, he has been going double figure rounds. Eight of his last nine fights have gone at least 10 rounds. By far the most effective of the exchanges. Sure. And that replay shows you one thing that Harry Arroyo capitalized on in his fight with Ali. The jab. Ali sends it out there and sometimes is slow to bring it back. And that is where Arroyo capitalized when he hurt Ali with right hands. Dean is not Arroyo in his prime, but Still exploiting a little bit of a weakness in Ali's defense. Medina trying to land that right uppercut here. Again, look at the jab by Ali, leading with that left. And the important thing in that jab, it is a jab, and he is stepping forward with the jab, so he keeps all his momentum and so that the jab gets all the way there. And then puts him in perfect line to throw the right with full momentum. And you see the quality of Medina's shots are not bad at all. He's just being outshone like three, maybe four to one. Medina's still taking his best shot, trying to catch Ali on the counter. Right, 
Juan Medina simply stands right in front of Ali. I'm a little surprised that uh, Roberto is not moving more. There has to be a problem with his movement, probably now with conditioning, as it's been a tough fight. And to his credit, he has stood tough and still hope for that long shot opportunity that Ali will make a fatal mistake. The steam has gone out of a lot of Medina's shots right now. Well, Medina, to his credit, has taken some awfully good shots, some terrific combinations from Ali, and has yet to go down. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Come on, come on, our hand loose. Now Medina, he knows what everybody in America knows right now. The only way he is going to have his hand raised when that bell sounds once more is to put Ali on his back and keep him there. That is such a hard thing to accomplish, too, when it has to come. If it builds naturally, that's one thing, but in desperation, Ali knows it, too, and he's ready. Medina has been gutsy, but since the sixth round, he's been outclassed by a fighter who has been doing more rounds, more work, and is quicker. Ali trying to step to his right. This fight going into the 10th round, Dave, he is as strong now as he was in the early stages of this fight. He loves these long fights. He does. He go 15. This is one thing that should figure into his future title fight, assuming that he can get one. Because he's done his road work with these fights. Now, well, nine of his last ten fights have gone into the tenth round or beyond. Look at him, he is all over Medina. Well, there's no glory for Medina tonight, but there is guts. Inside 20 seconds remaining in this fight. has landed some punches right on the nose of Medina. And Roberto Medina just fails to... The judges' scores were unanimous in favor of Ali, with one judge declaring it a shutout, while the other two credited Medina with one round. Uh, Ali goes on to challenge Jose Luis Ramirez for the WBC lightweight title six months after this fight. Uh, this bout marks the first instance that Medina goes the full 10-round distance. Uh, if you want to see more on Medina's double life as a criminal... Please check on the link in the description box if you haven't seen it already. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.